So I'm editing a landscape image of mine here in Adobe Photoshop, and I would like to pull down the highlights in the sky a little bit. They feel just a little too hot, a little too bright, and I'd also like to bring back a little bit of color, especially in this area here. Well, to do that, all I need to do is come up here to the Actions panel, and then down here at the bottom, I have an action I created called Dim highlights. A new curves adjustment layer is automatically added to the layers panel with a luminosity mask that is targeting the brightest values in the image. And then the blend mode is set to multiply. And when I toggle this on and off, you can see the effect it's having, right? That white is turning uh, it's not only getting darker, but it's also we're bringing back some of that inherent, you know, organic color that's in there, but you can't really see it because the values are are brighter, which is one of the really helpful things you can do with that multiply blend mode. And, you know, there's so many things you could do with blend modes. I actually just made a video recently here on my channel about some of the cool things you could do with blend modes. And if you're interested in that, I'll put a link down uh, in the video description so you can check that out. But this functionality I'm demonstrating here, the ability to click on an action and automatically create a luminosity mask with all the settings that I want, this is functionality that is part of the very latest version of the TK9 plugin. This is a plugin that has been around for a long time. It used to be called TK Actions a number of years ago. I've been using it a long time. It is a paid plugin, but I think for the price, I think it's a very, I think it's very reasonably priced, especially for the amount of value that I know that I get out of it. I mean, you know, I, I pay for the plug in with my own money. This video is not paid for or sponsored. I don't have any skin of the game at all. So in addition to recording actions, there are other really cool and helpful things that that you're able to do with the TK9 plugin. And let's jump back in here and I'm going to show you the next one. So in the very latest version of TK9, you hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then you come over here and you click on the sky selection button. Two channels have been created, one for sky and one for foreground. And then we can use these as masks for whatever purpose we want. For example, let me uh, turn off those channels, go back to RGB. And uh, let's say that I now want to adjust like, you know, this color of bluish purple, you know, that's in this dune here. Using the TK9 plugin, I can click on the color picker tool here to create a color mask. I can click on the dune and then I get this here and it's showing me you know in white anything that is white is being revealed by the mask and anything that is you know black or dark is being concealed by the mask and then here in the mask editing interface i can you know adjust the the hue like the range of hues that this mask uh, should target i can also adjust the brightness or the darkness of this increase and decrease the contrast, how refined this mask should be. Like I can get really, really selective and targeted with it, which is great. But one of the things you may be noticing here is that it's also selecting my sky up here. Like it's also going to be making some adjustments up there because you know, that, that hue also exists up there. It's really important to make selective adjustments to both the sky and the foreground independently. So what I want to do with this mask here is remove the sky from it. Like I don't want it in this mask. Well, to do that, all I need to do is come down here to the calculator button, click on that. And then we have these four buttons here, and this is add, subtract and intersect, just like, you know, those buttons in Lightroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to intersect it by clicking this X button here. Then I click on this, my channels button here. And here I have sky and foreground, those channels that you saw just a minute ago. Click on foreground and it's going to show me the foreground mask. That looks good. Click the equal sign to finish up. And now the sky has been removed <laughs> from my mask. Obviously this is extremely helpful. And so then from this point, I could then output this mask to whatever I want. I can create a curve. I can do a brightness or a levels. I could do hue saturation. I could do dodging and burning for color. I would typically use hue and saturation. And now I have my mask ready so I can, you know, raise and lower the saturation. I'm only affecting the foreground in front of the sky. And uh, let's just click on sky and take a look at sky. Sometimes it's not quite exact. Well, we, what we can do if there's any additional cleanup that I want to make, like you know, like let's say that I want to remove some of this here or I can invert uh, the brush, use black and then paint inside the selection here in order to be, you know, cleaning up these lines and getting it 
Exactly right. Once you have a sky and a foreground channel, you can use those same channels over and over and over again when you are creating your masks, when you are making your selections and adjustments. All right, the next one is really easy, but super helpful. And it's the kind of thing that I think can be easily overlooked. Let's say that I want to, again, you know, make like a bunch of edits to the sky, or I want, want to make a bunch of edits to the foreground, or I have, you know, some particular selection that I need to use a bunch of different adjustment layers with. Maybe I want to adjust the hue and the saturation. I want to do some dodging and burning. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do that all needs to be masked. Well, that's really simple to do, and it doesn't matter which masking option you choose. I mean, you can choose the lights and darks option here. You can pick a particular value. You can use the color masking tool, or you can use the, uh, the My Channels one here, like we, um, like we looked at before. I'm gonna select foreground here, and then down here at the bottom, you will see this tiny little folder here. Click on that folder, and what it does is output that channel as a mask to a new group. So then from here, I can add whatever I want. I can add, you know, levels, I can add curves, I can add, you know, hue, saturation, and all of those adjustments are all nested underneath this group folder with that mask applied. Any adjustment that I make is now going to be masked. Also new in the latest version of TK9, down here at the bottom of the multi-mask panel, you will see these buttons down here. If you hold down the shift key, and let's click on curves here, the plugin adds five curve adjustment layers to, uh, to the layers panel. And next to each layer, you will see this little icon over here at the far right. That is the blend if icon, which should give you a hint as to what's going on here. But it's automatically created a blend if selection that is targeting zone one. It is targeting the darkest values in the image. And if I come up here to zone two, click on that, it selects the next uh, range up, zone three, the next one up from there. So what it's done here is create five curve adjustment layers that target the full tonal range of the image from black to white and divides it up into five particular zones. Then with these curves, we can then make adjustments let me bring the properties panel over. We can then make adjustments to whichever zone we want to be making uh, adjustments with. I can bring up the midtones a little bit in zone three, push those up, and then pull down the highlights a little bit in zone four. You know, what we're doing here is just editing the image, editing, you know, the full tonal range of the image using these blend if selections, but without creating a mask, without going through the process of creating a luminosity mask and, you know, trying to figure out what range we want. All we have to do is hold down that shift key and click on one of those adjustment layers. And then you get uh, these uh, zone adjustments here uh, that you can use to be adjusting and balancing the tonal values in your image. Now, this same shift click functionality has also been added to the blend modes up here. Uh, these are at the top of the CX panel and the combo panel in TK9. And when you click on these, these normally, you know, change the blend mode of whichever layer is, you know, currently selected. But with the latest version of TK9, what you can do is hold down the shift key and then select either the soft light, the screen, the overlay, or the multiply blend modes. I'm going to do soft light. And when you do that, you get a new curves adjustment layer here in the layers panel with a black mask. The blend mode is set to soft light. The brush tool over here is automatically selected and the foreground color is set to white. And uh, I'm just going to paint this curve adjustment uh, layer in here. Now, as you may know, if you uh, have you know viewed some of my other uh, videos, anytime you add a curves adjustment layer, just a straight up you know 45 degree angle curves adjustment layer, and then change its blend mode to soft light or overlay for that matter. Overlay is stronger. And it's just a quick way to act to add contrast to your image. You could also like shift click on screen here and screen uh, brightens the image. So if I wanted to like, you know, brighten like this area back in here, you know, we are effectively dodging and burning the image by, you know, just, you know, shift clicking on these blend modes up here. And then everything is set up automatically. So I can just jump in and start 
painting. You know, for me, it's like getting into that creative flow state is so important where I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing and the interfaces and getting in the way. And so that for me is part of the reason why tools like these are really valuable because I don't have to think about running around and changing all these different things. I can just click on one thing, jump in and start painting and start doing what it is that I want to do. I bet some of you um, and I, and I say this because this is something that I've definitely done as well. When needing to create a, lumin a luminosity mask, you just come in here and select lights one or lights two or darks one or darks two or whatever. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, there's no problem in doing that, but actually let me go back and, and do it again. Let me, uh, let me just do darks two. And then up here, I'm going to turn on this gradient. If you've never clicked on this before, this adds a gradient down here to the bottom of the image which is effectively like, you know, the histogram. It is just showing us, you know, from black to white, uh, which tonal values in the image are going to be uh, selected. And then you can also click on this color button here to uh, add a color overlay to it. So it's a little bit easier to see. That actually looks, <laughs> actually looks pretty cool. Anyway, if you look at this gradient down here, you will notice that this mask is selecting everything from pure black up through like the mid to light shadows, like just before you hit middle gray. You know, that's fine for certain types of adjustments, but as you may know, like black and the values just above black, like close to black, those could be rather sensitive because especially if they contain important detail and texture, a lot of times you don't want to push those values further towards black and uh, and effectively you know lose detail and texture but this third option here blend if does something a little bit different this one has a similar interface to the one we just looked at i mean we have you know darks one darks two etc we have midtones i'm basically doing a darks two just like i did before but let's say that you know, we want to protect our darkest values like i only want to dark at the dark in the stuff that's like just below middle gray but not all the way down to black well, I could come down here and I can grab these sliders and pull this in a little bit so we feather it. And if I want to, you know, pull in the blacks and just, you know, clip it so it doesn't, you know, go into the blacks at all, I can raise my black point like that. Uh, or I can feather it out. And you can see what's happening here, right? So this effect is now being concentrated in those kind of like, how would you describe that? That's like a dark midtone or a bright black i don't know it's like somewhere right in that pocket in between which you know to me is oftentimes the area that i really want to target like i don't want more black in the image i just want darker shadows so with the blend if adjustment here i can be very precise in what i'm in what i'm adjusting and again i'll put it to a curve adjustment layer or you know whatever it is i want to you know output it to and then i'm able to adjust the tonality that way and i'm not affecting my blacks like anything that's already black or really dark in the image it is going to stay dark but you know not get any darker than it currently is i'm only adjusting the stuff that's you know just to the right of that this masking you know option here uh, is really helpful i think especially if you're just trying to be very selective very careful with your uh with your mask creation and and with your tonal selections in your image and by the way speaking of blend if if you like the uh the interface here for the blend if uh mask this interface is also available through this option down here through this button if you click on that well now you are editing the blend if properties of this layer except instead of using photoshop's blend if interface which is kind of fiddly and a little bit wonky i know i don't particularly like it well you can use this instead and this has all the same functionality you know you're able to you know pull it apart however you want oh and you would probably also want to see what it is that you're doing right well you can click on these double arrows here and uh and then when you're making these adjustments here and adjusting your blend if values you're able to visualize it on screen. You're able to see exactly what the uh, what the values are going to be, how this layer is going to be blended into the layer underneath. And you can also target specific colors. You can check target here. And like, let's say I just want to target my cyans or I just want to target cyan and blue. That is an option as well. So if you are a fan of using blend if when making adjustments and when editing an image, uh, that you know interface is like the one that's in Photoshop, but better.
So I realize this video may not have been for everyone, uh, but I hope this video was helpful, uh, especially to those of you who are currently using the TK plugin. Hopefully I gave you some new things to explore and to experiment with. But hey, if you've never used the plugin before, if this is the first time you've ever seen any of this, if you are, let me put it this way, if you are someone who gets kind of deep into adding and subtracting and intersecting masks in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw. Well, the masking tools that are built into TK9 just, they just go way beyond that. I mean, it's kind of like that on steroids. I mean, it's just much, much more. And you can be intersecting and blending and subtracting and whatever. I mean, there's all different kinds of things you're, you're able to do, which is really helpful when, you know, as they say, God is in the details, right? When you're like going in and you're just fine tuning all these little things and trying to get your image exactly right. You know, I just find TK9 to be helpful when, you know, not only building actions and making my workflow faster and better and smarter, and but it's also really, really powerful when creating masks and making precise selections and, you know, fine tuning an image and getting it just right, getting it, you know, achieving your creative goal with the image, which can be kind of hard to do sometimes in a raw photo editor where, you know, it's more of a linear editor and you don't have layers, you don't have blend modes, you don't have all these additional tools at your disposal. So if you're the kind of person that <laughs> if you're like me and you like to, you know, uh, you like to kind of zero in on this kind of stuff, TK9 plugin is uh, is fantastic, I think, and I think it's definitely worth uh, picking up and checking out. If you're interested in TK9, I'll put a link down below in the video description where you can go and pick it up for yourself. And by the way, uh, the developer, Tony Kuiper, was kind enough to provide me with a coupon code. Uh, if you'd like to save a little bit of money, you can knock 10% off of your purchase by using my last name, Domini. Just put in the coupon code uh, field and you'll you'll get 10% off. That's it, everyone. Uh, happy holidays. Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, hope everything is good with you in your part of the world. Um, exciting things happening in 2025. Making some uh, some plans for next year, and, um, and I'll be sharing uh, more of that with you very soon. And uh, that's it. I'll see you next time.